Alright, this is lesson 8.3, graphing reciprocals of linear functions. So far in this unit, all we've dealt with is absolute value functions and how to go about graphing those. Now we're going to look at the other half of this unit, which is dealing with the reciprocal functions. Okay. So let's get started here. Recall that the reciprocal of a number x, such that x cannot equal 0, is the number 1 over x. So We've dealt with reciprocal functions, uh, or reciprocals, I guess I should say, uh, many times before. For instance, if I asked you guys what's the reciprocal of 3, most people know that you just take that number and you kind of flip it, right? Because any number is always over 1, you can flip it and you get 1 third. For instance, we have 2 thirds. Well, you just flip it and you get 3 over 2. Well, the other way of thinking of uh, a reciprocal, and, and the true definition of it is, it's whatever number you multiply it by to get 1. So if you take 3 and you multiply it by 1 third, it's equal to 1. So 1 third is the reciprocal of 3. Well, similarly, we can say the same thing with uh, functions. The reciprocal function f of x, such that f of x cannot equal 0, is 1 over f of x. So if we ever want to know what the reciprocal function is, uh, we just take that function and we put basically a, uh, a 1 over top of it. Okay? So let's take a look at uh, these ones right down here. So what I have is I have to consider the function y equals x plus 1. Well, that is what we would call just a linear function. Like so. And if you want to get the reciprocal function, notice all I do is I just put the 1 over top of it. Okay, so fairly straightforward. Um, well, let's mosey on. The graph of y equals 1 over x plus 1 has what we say no x-intercept because it's impossible for this ever to be equal to 0. Now, I want to just focus a little bit on what I mean here by the x-intercept and how we determine that. Well, if you recall from earlier this year, we um, found out that to determine the x-intercept, we set y equal to 0. And so what I'm saying is it's impossible for you ever to get this to equal 0. So as a result, something kind of funky happens right here. What we say is that this x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. And this is going to happen, I'll review this on the next page again, but this is going to happen for every single graph, all right, is that you're going to have a horizontal asymptote, and it's going to be um, right basically on the x-axis, okay? So um, the x-axis is a horizontal intercept, hor sorry, a horizontal asymptote of the graph. That is a horizontal line. That the graph approaches. All right, so let's look at another type of asymptote we have. So far, we've had a horizontal one. You can probably imagine that we're going to have a vertical one here. y equals 1 over x plus 1 is also uh, kind of funky here. We say it's undefined when x equals, it should be a negative 1 right here. So you can go and change all these to a negative 1. Well, why is it undefined when x equals negative 1? Well, imagine what happens when you take this negative 1 and you put it in here. You get 1 over, uh-oh, 0. And remember, we cannot divide by 0. And so what we'd say is that is x equals negative 1 is a non-permissible value. All right. And so that means that we get a vertical All right, in the examples to follow, what we're going to be looking at is how we can determine uh, where these asymptotes are, basically what asymptotes are and how to graph them, okay? It's not too terribly uh, tough of a concept to figure out. Uh, so let's look at example one here. So the horizontal asymptote, as I said, is always going to be really easy to figure out. Vertical asymptote's a little bit more difficult, but not too tough. It's basically wherever this function um, is going to be undefined, right? So if you recall, we've, we've dealt with this quite a bit this year where we tried to find uh, what the restrictions were of, uh, of functions. So whenever we are looking for, so write this down, this is going to be a little note. Whenever we're looking for the vertical asymptote, uh, we look for where? The denominator is undefined. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take that 4x minus 3, and we know that it's impossible for this ever to be 0 down here. So I set it not equal to 0, and then we just solve. We get 4x cannot equal 3, or x cannot equal 3 quarters. So what we would say is that we have a horizontal asymptote, sorry, a vertical asymptote,
that x equals 3 quarters. So what the heck does that mean? Well, if I uh, give you guys a little sketch right here. Let's say those are my axes, and let's say this is 3 quarters right here. Well, what happens is we're going to have some function, and it's going to have this little dotted line right here. So in terms of the, uh, the point 3 quarters right there, this function is going to get infinitely close to this line, but it's never going to touch it. All right? and so we're going to look at what that means uh, in the examples to come here. So let's mosey on to the next page. For all reciprocal functions, y equals 1 over f of x, y cannot be 0 since the function, the reciprocal function, can never be 0. So we looked at that on the previous page. This means that the line y equals 0, or the x-axis, is a horizontal asymptote. Now this never changes, all right? So I want you to write this little note. Uh, this is for every reciprocal function. Okay, the horizontal asymptote is always going to be just right in the middle of your graph at y equals 0. So just to sketch it out, it's always going to be a dotted line right on this x-axis like so. Okay. Now something else that's kind of interesting about these is for any function y equals f of x, well what ends up happening is that there's these two points right here. These ones and these ones. They end up being common. So you can just write common points. Because if you take the reciprocal of 1, so let's say my regular function just had a 1 in it, and then you take the reciprocal of it, you just get 1. When you take the reciprocal of negative 1, you also get 1. So what we're going to see here is we're going to have common points uh, where the line y equals 1 or the line y equals negative 1 intersect the graph. Okay? Um, and so to complete the sentence, any points where the line y equals 1 or y equals negative 1 intersect the graph of y equals f of x, we say they lie typo, on the graph of y equals f of x and the graph of y equals 1 over f of x. So we have those common points that we're going to deal with. So I'll show you what I mean uh, when we go and graph these. The common points end up being a big deal. So the first function here, uh, let me go and graph it in green right here. So 2x plus 3, y equals 2x plus 3. So notice that that's a linear function. We have a y-intercept at 3, make a nice big dot. We have a slope of 2, so up 2 over 1 up 2 over 1, like so. Try to make as many of these as you can. They are important because it makes it a little bit easier to graph this accurately. Okay. Now you can grab your ruler and trying to be as careful as we can right here. We get a function like so. Okay, so linear function, we're expecting that to happen. Now, how do you go and graph this? Well, of course, you could make a table of values. That works. But we're going to look for a little bit of a, a quicker way to do this. All right. And so before I start graphing that one down there, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to uh, try and uh, write down some other information that we know. Well, I said, whenever this original function that we just graphed here is equal to 1 in the y with the y-coordinate and negative 1, well, these, I'm going to just make this red, that point and that point, these are going to be common points. So it doesn't matter where that graph was. Let's just say for argument's sake that that green graph was a graph that looked like this. Okay? Well, I would look for wherever the graph is at 1. So the graph is at 1, let's say, right here, and the graph is at negative 1, let's say, right there. Well, that would be where the, uh, the regular function and the reciprocal function intersect. Okay? So I'll just get rid of that. So we have these two dots right here. Those are important. Next thing I'm going to draw in is I'm going to draw in where my horizontal asymptote is. Now remember, the horizontal asymptote never changes. It's always this dotted line right here, right on the x-axis. So I draw that one in. Okay. What you're going to see is the graph's going to get infinitely close to that line, but never touch it. The fourth thing that I'm going to highlight here is this little point right here. So notice that that's where this graph crosses the x-axis. Well. I'm going to also draw myself a vertical asymptote right there. Okay, and that's kind of like what we did on the uh, the previous page. Remember I said take whatever the uh, denominator is here, 2x plus 3, and set it not equal to 0. So for this one we get 2x cannot equal negative 3, or x cannot equal negative 3 over 2. Well that is where that is at, right? That's negative 1.5 right there, which is the same thing. Okay. Now. Finally, let's go and let's graph this function in blue right here. So, 
first thing I know is that it's going to go through these two points right there. Okay, so I'm going to make that point blue right there. So those are going to be common points. Now the reason is, if I take that point that was at a height of 1, I take the reciprocal of it, it's just equal to 1. If I take this one, this one has a height of 1, 2, 3, the reciprocal of it is just 1 third. So I'll try and estimate right there, it's tough to be accurate. This one's at 5, the reciprocal of 5 is 1 fifth. You see these get very, very small as we keep moving on there. So they get infinitely close to that line, but they never touch. If I was to take this point right here, it's tough to see as well, but if that point's at, let's say, 0.5, the reciprocal of it would be up here at 2. And if I keep going infinitely close to that line, these points get higher and higher. So on this side of the line, it gets infinitely close to that, and then it kind of moves away like so, and then it gets infinitely close to this horizontal asymptote. Now on the other side, as you can imagine, we have the same scenario. It goes through this common point. This point has a height of 3, so we'll put it down here at 1 third and 1 fifth like so. And so we get, ooh, a little, a little sketchy there. Get a reciprocal function that looks like so. Okay, so it's kind of a funky looking one. You might want to uh, borrow one of my graphing calculators so you can see uh, what these look like. But uh, that is what uh, a reciprocal function of a linear function looks like. So let's uh, move on to example 2. Okay, this one I wouldn't mind you guys trying on your own. Uh, you can do that now, but just by pausing the video. So, in any event, to go ahead and graph this, the first step is to oops, sketch the original function. So the original function, right, they've already taken the reciprocal. So we can say that the linear function, the original function, was just y equals negative 2x minus 4. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to graph that. I'll graph this one in green as we did before. Okay. So this one has a y-intercept at 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, and a slope of negative 2. So we go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, like so. Try to be as accurate as you can. Okay. With your straight edge, you can go ahead and graph this guy. Not too bad. Good. Okay. Now, the next thing I want you to uh, be concerned about, so that was kind of the first step. Uh, second step is we need to take care of our asymptotes. Okay. So let's break this down. We'll deal with the, we'll do this in black here. Horizontal asymptote. Well, this is the unique one, right? I'll just write this. It never changes. And so that's always the line of y equals 0 right here. Okay. So that's always going to be this line kind of running right through the middle, like so. Good. All right. And then we also need to look for the vertical asymptote. Now, hopefully you recall what the vertical asymptote is. The vertical asymptote is wherever this crosses the x-axis. So it looks like it crosses the x-axis at this little point right there. If you want to figure out for sure, right, how we can figure out the vertical asymptote is we just take negative 2x minus 4 and we set it not equal to 0. We end up getting negative 4 cannot equal 2x or x cannot equal negative 2. Is that at negative 2? Yep. So we see that that is the equation, x equals negative 2. So from there I'm going to draw my little hash line going all the way down, like so. Okay, and now what we need to do is we need to look for where are those points common, right? So try to look wherever the graph has a height of 1. So this one has a height of 1 right at this random little point there, a height of negative 1 at that little point right there. And that's really good enough for me. Um, as long as you have all of that information down, the rest you can kind of estimate. So what I mean is that this graph's going to go close, 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 and then through that point and then get closer and closer to that line. Okay, make sure it never crosses. Same on this side. It's going to be very, very close right here. And it's going to start moving away and through that point and then get closer down there. Okay, That's how you go and uh, graph something like so. Last thing down here is it, uh, it wants to know uh, what is the domain and range of this function. Well, uh, if we take a look. Oops, this is missing a negative right there. Uh, what is the domain and range? So, well, remember what domain is. Domain is talking about, right, my x values, and range is talking about my y values. Okay, so what can we see? Well, for this function, right, it's the function that I made uh, in red right there. 
it looks like it goes infinitely to the left, infinitely to the right, but it has one value where it's not at, and that's 